Okay, well, welcome everybody. So today we're going to be painting and talking about how to capture colorful skies in watercolor. And specifically, when we talk about colorful skies, we mean skies that aren't blue, even though obviously blue is a color. Um, we're gonna be talking about how to make your skies more colorful. And especially when we see those effects are during sunrise and sunset. Um, but those aren't the only time. So we'll talk about that a little as well. So we'll, we have about an hour and a half. So we will be discussing some of the points. We'll be, I'll be um, sharing some of my artwork and some other artists that I like a lot and how they approach colorful skies. We'll be talking about um, how to sort, I guess how to approach, just really how to approach what colors to use, what techniques you you can use that will be helpful. And then we'll be painting a little bit as well. So this is meant to be an interactive Zoom. That's why it's a live Zoom. I could just do recorded YouTubes that a lot of artists do where there's no interaction, but I, I prefer this. So it'll get posted. We're recording, it'll get posted to YouTube, but it won't be edited. Just so you guys know, it's the casual nature of these, but you can always skip around if you wanna go and watch, or if you're watching this on YouTube because you missed it and you're watching the recording, then you, you just know this is um, an unedited version. So we are just gonna be painting and chatting and talking about colorful skies. Go ahead and bring your watercolors. We'll, we'll definitely have time to do a couple of paintings today. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Give me a quick second. Thought it was set up. <laughs> I want to get it to the beginning of, I have a PowerPoint, which, which I always have set up where I have examples and things like that. So let me grab that. Here we go. Okay. So how many of you have actually painted either a sunset or a sunrise? I have. I have. I have. I have. Great. And did you find it easy or challenging or maybe somewhere in between? Any words of wisdom? Challenging. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it can be particularly challenging, you know, how to get sometimes that glow in the sky without making green <laughs> with the yellow and blue mixed together, how to make it look not garish. I think that's always my biggest challenge, how to make it. So it looks natural and not so garish. So we'll cover some of those things. So I've got some slides that help because we're visual people, right? So oh, wow. can you guys see my sky? Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. So this, this is one that, Joyce, did you send me this photo? I'm trying to remember, but about a year ago, we tackled this together from a, one of the students' photos. And um, it it's just, it's interesting because it was, um, Definitely not would not have been my usual approach to a sky, but I was really happy how it came out. So there's not one set approach. We'll talk about some different approaches, but before we do that, let's just talk about what we're seeing first, right? We I always say like in order to paint something, it it is helpful to know what you're looking at. So let's look at a few things. So so sunrise and sunset are usually when we have the most colorful skies. Now that can change based on weather conditions, right? If there's a storm, you can have super colorful skies. We have wildfires recently. So um, that being said, our, our normal times of the day where we get more color in the sky is in the morning when the sun is rising and then in the evening at dusk. So the question that people always ask me is, do they look different? Do you paint them differently? So I think that the answer is no, not really, not fundamentally. The, this is from when we went to the Cotswolds, by the way. So Sarah, you might recognize this farm. Oh yeah. Yeah, so this, take a guess you guys, sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Yeah. It yeah. is, it's okay. sunset, yeah. yeah. Could just as easily be sunrise, but it was sunset. There's nothing really fundamentally different about the way the light behaves, the effects of the light, the cause of the colors that we get in the sky is exactly the same um, at, at the, in the morning and in the evening. So I would say that most of the differences that we see are, are qualitative and they're also subjective. So 
where are you? What is the weather like? Is there a lot of humidity in the air? Um, what altitudes are you are you at? You know, et, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and also any given day can be different, right? It also really depends on our mood and our eyes. Some scientists have said that in the morning, our eyes are more rested. So they are more sensitive to the differences in color that we see in the atmosphere. Um, whereas at night we're tired and we don't see them as much. Also that the morning is cooler generally. And so you may have, uh, and the evening may be more humid, interestingly enough. So there may be some differences with that, but again, I think they're all qualitative. Um, so take a look at this photo. Can you tell in this photo if it's a sunrise or a sunset? I'd say it's sun sunrise. And why do you say that? I don't know, just because the sun's so bright. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the sky is so light blue. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that's I, part of it. Yeah, the sun is so light blue. Yeah. So is it sunrise? It is sunrise. It is. Yeah. But sometimes it's tricky because I feel like at sunset, quite often, your buildings and other things like trees, the landscape, it can be so backlit that it can feel like sunset. Mm -hmm. So it's not an easy one, but you guys got that one right. Some artists just purely, this is us as artists interpreting dawn and dusk. Some artists like to depict dawn as more glamorous than dusk. You know, it's the new day rising. It's got biblical implications and so forth. Other artists prefer it the other way around. I think I'm one of them. I prefer dawn as more subtle and pastel and for sunset, for dusk to be more dramatic. But it's a personal preference, really. I think for me, there's a slight difference in that the dawn like really does dissipate into clear light of day and colors always uh, often will linger in the clouds. And then you'll have, like Sarah, like you said, there's that blue in the sky that will be peeking through. Well, at sunset, it can feel more dramatic because the sky is going dark, right? You're getting that darkness and you can often feel that transition can be, can feel like it's more dramatic. And then you've got that back, backlit scenery sometimes. Personal preference though, it really isn't like one right way. They are so close. It depends on what you feel like depicting, right? The emotion of the scene the moment that you were actually in, if it was an actual moment. So I wanna show you guys some examples and talk about what, you, what we see and how some artists interpret. The examples that I show that don't have an artist mentioned are mine. So one of my tips, and you can see it here, is that you can use a variegated uh, under layer, under painting or wash, however you want to say it, your first layer. And by variegated, I mean, you've got soft transitions of colors like an ombre, right? So here in this one, it's red to orange to yellow, and it's actually not a vertical transition. It's a horizontal transition. Mm. <laughs> here you've got uh, a vertical from yellow to green to the blue of the lake. But where does the sky and and the water start but if you start off with a variegated wash as your underpainting then you can layer analogous colors and tonal changes in the colors on top of those for very subtle effects so by analogous analogous colors i mean colors that are next to each other on the color wheel right. so here you've got yellow to orange to red to purple Okay, those are all colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. And it feels very natural, doesn't it? Feels mm -hmm. very comfortable. I'm gonna show you an artist right now who does it way better than I do. And he's one of my favorite artists and he does the best skies mm -hmm. ever. So mm -hmm. I like, I love Sterling Edwards and I, I, you can see how expensive his, his paintings are. <laughs> I don't own one, but I um, have a lot of, captures of his in, in a folder on my computer. And he is the master of doing the soft variegated sky <laughs> with layers, soft layers over it. They're not overworked 
And you could just see that he's got a little bit of purple in this one. The sky goes to yellow where the sun is either setting or rising. I don't know because this painting is called snake grass. I, I don't know if it's sunrise or sunset, but he's layered purple on top of the pink and a more orangey yellow on top of the yellow to get these very um, soft transitional moments. What do you guys think? It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's gorgeous and it's so simple. Like I'm not yeah. saying that it's easy, but the concept of it is simple. The execution of it may be a little bit tricky. Right. Here's another one. So this one, I forget what this one is called, um, but you've got the same concept. You've got the glow of the sun here and the glow I really love in this one. It's actually going over the mountain, like in front of the mountain. So the glow is hitting the mountain and illuminating it to a degree or uh, the hill here at the bottom. And then you've got a transition to pink and to purple. And what you notice is it's all pastel. There doesn't mm -hmm. have to be, um, or there isn't, this artist doesn't use dark, color, dark values or dramatic color changes. But in order to get that glow and that pastel, it's so soft. And then you have the darker rocks and the crisper edges in front of it. Mm -hmm. Here's a third one. This one I think is just masterful. So you've got this sort of quinacridone rose. Also the purple is in the mountain. So it's a soft transition as well, but it's popping out a little more cause it's darker. And then you've just got hints of darker clouds in the sky. Well, that often happens in the desert or in the mountains at sunset. Mm -hmm. is that you get a lot of cloud display in the morning and then at night your clouds just appear thinner they thin out in the atmosphere for some reason and they are they stand out as darker behind your sky at twilight so i've seen this actually in the sky many many times both in the desert my parents used to live in phoenix and also up in the mountains where my friends live so even though Sterling Edwards uses this, I would say trick or technique over and over again, it's, it looks true to me. It looks real. It doesn't look like it's just, um, I'm, I'm losing the word I'm looking for, but it doesn't look like a trick or a construct, I guess is the word. So there's one pro tip. Another pro tip is you can employ blossoms to create the glow. A lot of the time when we think about blossoms or blooms or cauliflowers or run-ins or whatever you want to call them, is when you drop in a watery mixture on top of an, a damp area. Um, a lot of the time we think of them as mistakes, but there are some artists who use them to great, great effect. And I've been playing around with using them to get that effect of the sun coming up or going down behind the mountains. I've been doing that a lot lately. Here's the one that came out, I think the most effectively. And then I tied it in also. So you can kind of see, I dropped in some of the pink from the mountains into the green of the sky. And yes, I used green for the sky, <laughs> but um, I also mirrored some of the blossoms in the foreground as well. So these were all on purpose. Do you guys like that effect? It feels like the sun rays. Some people might mm -hmm. think it looks like a mistake. No, I like it. I think it was effective on this one. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'll show you someone else who does it really effectively is Ken Potter. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so um, yeah, wow. Ken Potter, uh, who died about 10 years ago, he was one of the early California watercolorists. He lived up in the Bay Area and he never painted a dull sky that I can think of. He employed very use of creative colors, um, which is interesting because he, I mean, he wasn't a minimalist. If you look at Sterling Edwards, he's a bit of a minimalist. Mm -hmm. If you look at Ken Potter, definitely a maximalist. And he's got blossoms going on. He's got colors. He's got uh, tons of shapes and, and objects and texture and more blooms in the bottom foreground on the left. I mean, it's just amazing. And yet it works. And still, none of the colors are garish, are they? 
Oh, really? I like it. They all work together. And I think that that mm -hmm. is, I mean, he is really one of the greats. If you've never heard of him, he's got a book um, that you can buy through the California Watercolor Society. They're online. And it's an amazing book. Um, if you are intrigued, just go look at California Watercolor Society and you can see um, a lot of the paintings. So you can just browse it like it's a museum <laughs> or a gallery. But look at all those colorful skies. And again, so much happening. And yet he didn't care. He's going to make those skies colorful. I think um, he's also got a great way of doing that. You know, there's pollution in the air and he's got a great way of having the sun kind of peek out. I think it just lost me. Sorry, let me mm -hmm. put it on myself again. So anyway, it's Ken Potter. You might want to take a look. California Watercolor Society, you'll get lost in that website for a long time. Um, and there are a lot of artists who work with colorful skies. Um, but what's interesting to me is that Ken Potter, he didn't reserve his colorful skies for sunset or sunrise. Almost all of his skies were colorful. As the body of his work is really colorful. So another technique that you can use is to create like a mist is to do a wet on wet technique. So layering wet on wet can give you not only the amazing colors in the sky, and but also can help you create that sort of soft glow, especially in the background where the shapes are a little bit softer, they blend a little bit more and you're seeing that haze come through. Here's another one of mine. So there's a lot of wet on wet and wet on damp, a lot of layering, layering, layering. Colors are really important in creating sunrises and sunsets and other maybe weather effects in the sky, storms and things like that. But I like to use my colors to help create the glow. There isn't, there aren't really any specific colors you should use. You can use whatever colors you want. You wear artists, right? But that yellow, especially a warm yellow, like a Hansa or a cadmium. I don't love cadmium for skies because it's quite heavy and opaque, but I prefer to use more transparent colors usually. But those yellows into oranges, into pinks, into purples, into reds those really can help you create the glow. And like you saw in the last Sterling Edwards, those colors can reflect onto the landscape or the objects in your painting. I know I'm mostly, mostly sharing landscapes right now, but your colorful skies don't necessarily need to be sky paintings or landscape paintings. They can just be a backdrop for whatever you're painting, which I'll show you in a couple. Um, so, yeah, having those colors in your palette, knowing what works is important. The trick is, is to, to some degree, to let the blue layer dry and not to, to try not to glaze the yellow over the blue too much. Because if you drop yellow into a blue sky, there is a chance that you're going to end up with a green intersection. And that might be fine for some of you guys. You can see here in the left of the painting, it kind of greened up a little bit. But if it bled a lot or mingled too much, you might end up with more of a green sky than you want, if that's not what you're going for, you know? And you did the blue, like you did the mountains and then the sky, and then you added the yellow. Is that how you did that? Yeah, I did the mountains first, and then okay. I did the blue of the sky, and I left a lot of white on the bottom. Okay, you let it all dry, and then... Let, let it dry. And then in that white space... Mm -hmm. I think I turned the painting upside down on this one. So mm -hmm. we could do this one. You know, this would be something we could do real quick. So I turned it upside down. And then in this white space here, I'll annotate. So I'll show you. Um, here we go. So first I did all the mountains, right? Mm -hmm. And then I had a crisp white edge. So I did paint it here down first. Mm -hmm. okay. Then I flipped the page over and I painted the blue up here mm -hmm. on a, a damp background and I let the blue flow down, but I didn't paint it. I painted only about up to here. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Then I let it dry. And so where the yellow is now was white of the paper. So I let it dry. And then I went back in with the yellow and I added the yellow once things were dry. So I, I got a little bit of glazing to green right here, but there was no actual mingling of colors of the yellow with the blue because the blue was already dry. So it was when you, when you, you drop when you drop the yellow, did, was it the paper wet? When I dropped the yellow, the paper was not wet. No. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Oh. But because you, you added wet, because it was yellow, so you were painting it and mingled with the blue then. It like reopened. Like, it didn't really mingle. It just glazed. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Glazed over. Yeah, yeah. It's really pretty. I yeah. really like that. That's why. I'm... Well, would you guys like to just try a simple version of that right now? Sure. Sure. Okay. And then did you add some orange even in these little areas? I yeah, think? yeah, let me undo these little things. So, so pretty, really yeah. nice and black. Thank you. I, um, <laughs> what I did was, um, I'll just show you right where. So after the yellow was in, I mm -hmm. just added like dropped in color or little touches. It probably, if I'm remembering correctly, was almost dry. Mm -hmm. And I just added little bitty bits here where yeah. I'm drawing it you know just like just highlights not everywhere because then it would look like an outline you know mm. and then um where there had been white I went back and I added little touches of those same yellows so that I could have some continuity of that glow in the landscape just a little, not a lot. I think there's uh -huh. a little here. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So let's do it. We'll just, you know, do a fake landscape. And, and then Anne, had you done the, the foreground before you did that yellow and then you did the foreground or you did? Yes. Okay. I, did the for, I did the mountains and the foreground first. And the foreground, okay. And the foreground, but I left spaces. See where there's so much white space? Yes. All these little white uh, horizontal sort of bits. I left those white horizontal bits. And when I did the yellow, I went back and I filled in some of those white bits closer to the mountains with yellows. So yeah, let's do it. It'd probably be easier to do it than talk about it, right? So go ahead and share my visualizer. So this is gonna be an imaginary landscape. Um, I'll do it here in this notebook. Maybe not as I'm fiddling with it. There we go. So if you wanna tape it off, you can. It does make life easier. Can you guys see, see this? I feel like I've got some got some shadow on there. Let me try to correct that. Is that good, you guys? Anyone? Yes. Yeah, we can see it now. It's not distracting with the shadow from this on here? We'll see when you paint. <laughs> well, I can just do this. I think it might be. <laughs> so I'm just going to use this. Then there's no, sh there's still a little bit of a shadow, but not as much. There we go. I'm buying a better light soon. I tested um, a friend's light out when we did the Tustin Art League, the mountainscapes. So for those of you guys who are there, you probably noticed I had better lighting. So I'm going to divide this page in two. We'll work small because we're just doing little studies and it'll be easier to get, get them accomplished and we'll have a little more time to do some more stuff. If you, work, if you wanna work really big, that's fine too, but I'm going to work on the smaller scale today. Is that an arches paper you use? Yeah, it is. It's arches and it is um, nine by 12. So you just kind of divide it in halves. Yeah. That wasn't a great half, though, I'll say. And I'm trying to remember the story. Okay, so let's draw a fake mountainscape. 
already out, already bad. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> Just, it's going to be mostly about the sky. So go ahead and leave yourselves a little room for sky, right? If you want to even do it lower, lower than I did, that would be great. Here we go. That's why we do it in pencil to start. Okay. So we've got some sky and then here's some foreground. I know I didn't draw it that dark, so I'll just share. Because really we're gonna concentrate on the, the sky today. Now you guys asked before what I did first. Did I do the mountains in the foreground or do the sky? It really does not matter. It doesn't matter. If there is a lot of snow on my mountains, I often will do the sky first. And the reason for that is because sometimes with the arches, uh, the, the wetness really can bleed, right? So unless you're masking out shapes, uh, because arches is cotton and when you really wet it, it really can, the wetness can flow in the middle, is sometimes it does flow a little bit over my edges of my shapes. And that could be a problem if I want there to be a white highlight at the top. Because if I painted the mountains first, and then I painted the sky and the sky bleeds a little bit into my white at the top of the mountains, there's no going back from that. However, if I paint the sky first, I can always sort of lower my mountains. Does that make sense? Yeah. But in this case, we'll do our mountains first, so. And then we'll go ahead and play with that sky. So I'm just going to work extremely abstract today, you guys. Shocking, right? <laughs> So I'm just going to try to get a little bit of mountainscape in and I, I'm going to leave some white at the top. I'm just doing for my imagination, uh, obviously no photo, but we can all do this. We can all use our imaginations occasionally. I paint a lot of mountains. So for me, this like zigzag motion of my brush comes pretty naturally. And then as the mountains are lower, that's where the trees really start, the tree line starts to appear. Higher up is not as many trees at the top. So I'll start adding a little bit of green in there. And then maybe a little bit of brown. I might soften some of these because they look a little too, a little too stylized. Okay. So then when you do the foreground, just leave some bits of white so that you can create that glow there later. I'm not doing all the bushes and stuff that I did before. That's, that will take too long. Now, if you wanted it to be a misty morning, this is a great time to drop in some details. Remember we talked about that just a moment ago. You have to know your paper and know how things are gonna spread because if the paper's too wet and you put some little details in, they might spread way too much. And then it just starts to colorize your whole background. But if you're kind of at the right stage of dampness and you can add a few things and it will spread a little, but it will retain shape. So this is spreading too much. 
maybe just a little too much. So sometimes I tell myself, oh, we'll just wait another minute and it will be dry enough. But then I forget that I added water or paint to it, water or paint. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So it's, it's not really going to be, be any better because it's still going to be very wet. In fact, it's going to be wetter than when I started because I had added little bits of paint to it. This is just, some, you know, sometimes me being impatient. So I'm just going to wait now. So it's super wet right here, but I went kind of slim over here. You know, there's really a lot of white. And if I get some bleeds into the sky, it won't bother me too much, but it should dry faster up here is what I'm saying. If you guys aren't sure about your paper or how fast it's gonna dry, or you want this to be your next masterpiece, <laughs> take a hair dryer to it, okay? Take a hair dryer. And just make sure at least that this top part here is dry. I'm not gonna do that, so I don't care. I wanna show you guys. So this is what I'm gonna do and maybe just listen or watch before you go ahead and do it. I'm gonna turn my painting upside down, but just for the purpose of showing you on the camera, it's easier to hold it sideways. I'm going to start my wet further away from the tops of the mountains. So that's how I'm gonna leave that yellow space for a glow, or I'm gonna leave it white and then add it yellow. So I'm just mimicking a little bit the shape of the mountains. It's not, it doesn't have to be exact. That glow will not necessarily be like cookie cutter, but I'm not wetting a whole space. You see that white that's not wet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I'm going to take a blue. So in this case, I think I'm going to use my Viviva because then I get my chance to talk about Viviva with you guys. So my Viviva color sheets, I've got them here. And I love how they flow on the paper. And I love the vivid sky. It's going to be a nice contrast to the earth tones that I've already laid down. So I'm going to mix up some Viviva in my palette. And should be a little bit maybe thicker than what normally I would use because I already wet the paper, right? So I'm going to start here. And if you really want a nice flow, then just tilt it. Especially if you want to see that flow. See how I'm tilting it? Mm -hmm. You can and add a little more if it's not flowing. Yep, go ahead. Which um, the Viva Blue is that one? Uh, this one is, I mixed two colors. So I mixed the peacock blue with the persimmon, persimmon, Persian blue, excuse me, Persian blue. Okay. And then I think at the top, I want to just put a little indigo at the top for more drama. Just a little bit. So this is just Daniel Smith indigo right on top of it. So if you like that little flowiness right there, do you guys like that? Mm -hmm. This is the way to do it. Use a dye that that dye is going to flow nicely. A paint that has dye versus a paint that is made from ground pigment. So, for example, ultramarine blue is made from ground pigment. So it's heavier. The dye is light. It's going to flow nice and evenly. But you do have to pick up the bead because it's going to it's definitely going to bead in here. But if you I get this effect also with my water, like when I do glacial lakes. So if you like that effect, then go ahead. If you don't want that effect, you can just continue down with your wash. So just continue. So I'll ruin it right now since we're talking about it, but I'll, you can just continue down with your wash, smooth that out. And that's what I did on the one that we showed before on the one that um, we're trying to sort of emulate, which just like that. But if you like that bleedy look, that's the best way to go about it. And then just tilt your paper just enough. If it feels like it's flowing too fast, tilt it back. Try to capture the bead a little bit. Because you don't, you want a sort of a natural transition here. You don't really want um, dark beads drying. 
at the edge. And a critical skill to every watercolorist is how to blend out the edge. You don't have to do it, you can have a line, but fading out the edges is super important. Just remember when you're fading out the edge of a wash that you just did to keep your paper tilted. Because otherwise what happens is that even the slight amount of water you did with the fade can run back this way and you're gonna get blossoms in your sky. If you keep the paper tilted, the water, try as it will, will not run back up again, right? So even though you're just using the dampest of brushes to create that fade, trust me, keep your paper on an angle. We don't talk about this a lot. And when we're in class, I don't angle my paper a lot because it's very hard to see, I think. And I'm holding it upside down and tilting it. I don't know how well you guys can see it. But people always say, but I got a bleed in my sky or I got a bleed in my whatever when I did that. Okay, so now I can turn it back. I'm gonna keep it slightly tilted. So again, it's still flowing all this way, but you can see now I've softened the edge out, maybe even a little too much there. So it might be green when I add yellow. But you know, when I do this on my own, sometimes I work a little more carefully. But it's nice. There's still some room, the white room, there for the glow. Once things are dry, then we'll add that little glow in. Okay. So now is also the time where I can go back and I can add some more darker details if I want to into the mountains, for example. Because before it was just too wet to do that, but now I can do that. There's nothing wrong with it as it is. It would be a nice kind of a subtle sketch. But if you want to add a little more, it's at the sort of, it's at this damp stage when it's a good time to do that. Everyone is awfully quiet. <laughs> Again, we're working. You know, I know. It's good. So I got my Viviva ambassadorship officially this week. Super excited. What that means for me is I get to do videos for them and they put them up on their YouTube channel and that kind of thing. Um, and I get some free products. So I, hopefully I'll get products early because they have a new product coming out that they've been teasing. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but um, that means I'll be able to share those things with you guys too. So that's exciting. Um, and then if you buy Viviva on their website, I have a code now. So you can use the code and you can get 10% off. So if you want to buy any of the Viviva products, you go to viviva.com and the code is an 10, like 10%. So it's my name and 10 and you get 10% off everything that you buy. Cool. Yeah, it's exciting. Okay. So I'm gonna stop because I wanna see where everybody is now. Anyone who wants to share. It's definitely, oh, my hair is really sticking up. <laughs> so let me move this. So this is where we are and this has to dry. This edge right here has to dry. So it could either take a blow dryer or share. I see Sarah holding up, so let's see. We'll do some share time and then maybe we'll all be dry. Beautiful. I don't Sarah. do so well with this, but I'm having fun. Oh, 
it looks great. I love the dry brush. You did do well. Oh gosh, you just are so cute. Thanks. Okay, next. <laughs> I speak the truth. I speak. Uh, it's hard to A little closer because you're yeah. bright. Oh, wow. Oh, Deb. Oh, I nice. love the little sound uh, mark with your brush. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love my oval wash brush. I know. I love the little marks it makes. It makes the best markings. <laughs> That's what I'm using today, too. Yep. Uh, Joyce, do you want to share? Mm. Yeah, I saw maybe. that back of your board, so I wasn't sure. If you say no, I'll take you off. Spot. I'm Thanks. still working on it. Okay, <laughs> you got it. Uh, Valerie, I'm coming to you. Thanks, Val, for always sharing. Valerie, that is oh. beautiful. Oh. Oh. oh, nice. I want to go there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Me too. we're... laughs> I love great. it. I mean, that oh, glow is going to really oh. pop things, but I feel like it's already done. You know, it's so good. <laughs> It's and your own, your today. own sky in your background looks nice too. Thank you. Yeah, it really does. Where are you? Yeah. My front yard, Long Beach. Oh, wow. Nice. All right, Minnie, thank you for sharing Minnie. Oh, great job, Minnie. Beautiful. Thank you. What brush did you use to make those mountains? That's really cool. Uh -huh. Oh, that, that little pointy brush. Yeah. A very similar brush, yeah. So the oval wash has different names. Some people call it cat tongue. That's really good. Nice work. Thank you. you left a nice little space for your yellow glow, yellow orange glow. I'm gonna have okay. a pink glow. Oh, pink. Oh, nice. Can't wait to see it. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. Uh, Thank you. It looks really oh. good, Joyce. Uh -huh. I have such a I have such a strong line here. How, I think I was like want to soften it out. So I'm gonna add my spotlight to yours. So when you've got that before it's dry, now it might be too damp for you to really fiddle with it right now. Is it is it drying or is it still really wet? Mm, it's pretty wet along that line. Okay. So what you want to do is clean your brush and get all the blue out of it, or take another brush. Sometimes it's easier to just take another brush and then dampen that brush, not wet. And remember, keep your paper kind of on an angle and soften that edge out. Uh -huh. Soften it a little. Just try to, you know, keep cleaning your brush. So the more, because every time you lift some color out of it, you're also, you could risk depositing it back again if you don't. So it's like, Soften, wash, and then blot. Soften, wash, blot, etc. So my Can water is all right. up a little bit, Anne. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So okay. So I did. I yeah. did manage to soften it a little. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Just keep going on the other side. Very good. Okay. Thank so, you. You're welcome. My my water is already so saturated, so I'm gonna have to change it after this. But um, anybody else want to share? I'll share. I'll share mine. It's not that great. But. Okay, well, thanks, Shelly. That's okay. We learn from each other. Hold it up I a just, little. I just have a weird horizon. My, I, I'm just can't get mountains very it's well. So pretty. <laughs> and then I got this bloom here when I the it, the water came down here, mm -hmm. and this is the second time when I used Viviva. I used the indigo blue. Mm -hmm. And when I apply it, it turns into two colors. It's yeah, it separates out. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? So it's not, it came up. I'm like, wait a minute, did I choose the right color? And sure enough, it started turning blue. But yep, I've had that happen too with um with that indigo color. It, yeah. It separates. Yeah. So, yeah. I kind of yeah. like that sometimes. Yeah, me too. It's fine. But yeah, I like your painting. I feel like oh. it's looking like Sterling Edwards. Oh, okay. Really <laughs> Thank nice. you. Awesome. <laughs> All right. I'll all right. Go. So Hillary so, wants to say that's all right. Well, my mountains look awful. My sky. Okay. I'm coming. I'm coming. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> they don't look awful. <laughs> they do in <laughs> real life. <laughs> Great. Oh, in real life. Well, what we can see is it looks good. So are you going to keep that crisp edge on your sky or are you going to soften it out? I was gonna, so should I do the yellow then soften it out? Or? No, no first. 
So soften it out right now. Yeah, soften the edge out so you have, it looks more like a smooth transition. You don't have to do it at all. You certainly, artist choice, you certainly could leave it as a hard line. And maybe the sky, there are skies that even look like that, but more commonly what you'll have is that soft transition. So when I, so is the yellow gonna run, the yellow's not gonna run into it though. Is that, I, I was trying to- It might, yeah, it might a little bit. Okay. But just don't worry about it, just stop. Yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, if you're worried, you can do what um, Minnie was gonna do is you could use like a purple glow or pink glow because then you won't end up with a weird green color, right? Hi, Pam, how are you? Thanks Hi, good. Waiting. Sorry, I thought it started at 11. Oh, that's okay. We um, were just looking at some examples and now we're all doing a little exercise where we are, are going to try to create that little bit of a morning glow here behind the mountains. So we painted the mountains first and then we painted the sky sort of fading down and we reserved a little bit of white and that's where we're going to touch in that yellow glow now. So that's where we are and you can catch up or you and it's recorded so for what you missed you can always go with, go back to the recording. Okay. So here we are. I think I moved to this. So I'm going to now use a smaller brush and my water is green. So I might need to change it because if my, <laughs> if my yellow looks too green, I'm going to be really bummed about it. So, but we'll see. So I have, yeah, I got a nice little um, yellow and I think that those colors look okay together. I'm also going to prep just a little bit of red and see if I can, I don't really like that orange with it. That's a muddy orange. So let me see if I can make a better orange or I do actually just have an orange in my palette. So let's see. Yeah, so I can maybe touch in a little bit of orange. So there's my test. So I've got the blue and then I've got yellow. I didn't really love that orange, but that orange I think is going to be, it's so much closer, right? And brighter. So I'm just going to, I know it's not 100% dry, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can. And I'm actually going to put my glasses on, which I rarely do, but I'd like to see what I'm doing. Now, if you wanted to erase your pencil lines, now would be the time to do it, but I'm not going to bother to do it. But I am going to, have just put a little bit of yellow in here, especially in the sort of valleys, valley areas, or just these little dips behind the mountains where it's a little bit lower elevation, right? So the sun is like sinking down there. You can also put it at the tops anywhere you want. And now I'm going to fade that yellow out just a little bit into the white. And if it, some of it fades into the blue, that's okay. Remember when you're fading out to tilt your paper just a little bit. So that's also called softening the edge, fading out. But with softening, usually I do it with more abandon. Like I just run a really wet brush along the side. This is more, I would say, blending or fading out, I would call it. I want it to feel softer. I don't want to see that hard brush line there. See what I'm doing? Now, you guys see how much of the white I lost to the to the process, right? The yeah. white, the white of the arches. It like I it happens all the time. I want big puffy clouds in the sky, so I leave a big cloud sized and shaped dry portion of the paper and then sure enough the wetness encroaches on it so you all I just forget sometimes you have to leave more than you think you need because the paper is so fibrous and porous so here we are I think are you adding more paint or are you just fading out uh, I added a tiny bit more a little paint. bit okay because like right here for example it was it seemed sort of anemic and I wanted it to be a little bit more showy. 
a little more punchy. And now I'm adding a little orange as well. So the orange is just going to be um, a hint of even brighter areas, just a little bit. And I'm adding the orange down at the base of the yellow, not at the top, right? But down in here. And that's how you get that kind of glow look. This is how you paint fire too, by the way, or how I paint fire anyway. If you want to continue that glow down into the mountain, you can just hit a couple of highlights in there into your mountain. Look how pretty that is. Just picks it up, it ties it together. Mm -hmm. Maybe you even want a little here. It doesn't matter, I didn't leave any white there. I'm just glazing it, just glazing it right over the color that's already there. And then here, where I left some white here, is now where you can add little bits of pure yellow and you can do it in a thin way. You can go bold and do it thicker. It's totally up to you and it depends on your painting. So the real thing is about the balance, right? Getting the balance right. You want some areas maybe to be, and this is a personal preference, but maybe you want some areas to be more pastel and then you want the eye to be drawn to an area where you need a little bit more happening. Or perhaps you want the whole thing to be super saturated and bright. It's up to you, but it's about finding the balance. So that's a pretty good start. Um, I would maybe let this sit and then go back and just add a few darks into the landscape just to create a tiny bit more visual interest. But you know, do you need it? I don't think so. And usually when I'm wondering if it needs it, there's two things I do. So I take off the tape is the first thing I do because the tape really throws off my value interpretation. And then I can look at it and say, okay, does that painting stand alone as a nice little sketch or does it still feel super unfinished? Artist choice, right? Like some, you talk to a handful of artists and some will say, oh, leave it as it is. I love how unfinished it is. It's, you know, you're in the middle of the tonal ranges and so forth and you don't need detail. And then you talk to another artist and they'll say, oh, you absolutely need more darks to contrast your lights. You need more detail. So it really is about what you want to achieve and how you like to paint and all that. But the first thing I do is I take off the tape and look at it. And then the second thing that I do is take a picture of it if I'm still not sure. So I take a photo and then I turn that photo, there's a shadow, so it's gonna be terrible, but then I edit that photo into black and white. You guys oh. ever do this? No, yeah, that's a good idea. You just turn it into black and white, and then you say to yourself, if I take all of the fancy footwork out, which is the color, does this painting stand alone? Huh. And that's how, you'll, that's how you'll have a second opinion. It's your own second opinion, but it's a manipulated, opinion. Yeah, that's a good, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. So um, there is this woman, I want to show you this thing. I'm going to just go get that. I'll be right back. She, um, this artist is Molly Hashimoto. Does anyone know her? Mm -mm. She does a lot of painting on the west side of the country. And she also does wood blocks and she has some fantastic books. She doesn't do a lot of colored skies. She puts a lot of color into her landscapes, but she does a lot of plein air sketching. 
she is quite the hero of mine. I'll just show you though, a lot of her paintings have that softness and that she's got value differentiation, but she's a tonalist for the most part. She stays in the middle of the value range. She doesn't use a lot of super bright whites and she doesn't use a lot of dark darks. She stays right in the middle. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are painting away. But not to say she doesn't always. I mean, sometimes she's got more value differentiation. But a lot of her sketches are extremely tonal sketches. And I absolutely love that work. But it's funny because when I do my own work, I'm trying to find some other real tonal ones. Here's another one. I know that she's got some darks right in the middle there. But a lot of her works are super soft. Could she have added more darks into this? Absolutely, but she didn't. And it's funny because I look at her works, these tonalist works, and I love them. I absolutely love them. And she doesn't use the darkest darks nor the lightest lights. But then when I do my own, I always feel like they need something. So I love it in her work and in my own work, I find it sometimes to be not enough or unfinished. <laughs> so I thought I would share that with you. So I think I'm going to leave it and I'm going to come back to it tomorrow and I'll see maybe do I want a little, maybe I want a little dark somewhere. It got a little messy over here. So maybe I'll clean that up just a little bit. But overall, I definitely feel like I got some of that glow, both in the yeah. scenery and up in the mountain. I'd love to see how you guys did. Anyone who mm -hmm. wants to share. So if you want to share, okay, Anne. So um, if you can raise your virtual hand, if you know how to do that, that will help me. Oh, beautiful, Anne. You got it. Oh, thank you. I might have you know, a little bit of lines that I that that I didn't blend out enough. But yeah, for a first try, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's really good. Thank you for sharing. Deb, I've thank got you. you. So I'm gonna come in as I see you. Oh, it's hard to see. Uh, there we go. Oh, nice work, Deb. Oh, your sky's That's so pretty. Oh wow. Deb, I'm, I'm good with this one. <laughs> Deb, you're getting better and better and better. Like seriously, especially your landscapes. They're really improving. Thank I you. Heard. You're welcome. Okay, I got Valerie, then Hillary. Mm. Oh, um, wow. Masterful. That's really oh. nice. That's yeah. a dramatic sky. Wow. Good job, Val. Thanks. Wow, Sorry. that's great. You should frame that. <laughs> so that's beautiful. really cool. Hillary, you're not. Uh, mine bled all over the place. Okay, let's see. Oh, but it. it Beautiful yeah. bleeds. Those are gorgeous. Yeah, they're, they're, I would yeah. not be unhappy with those. That's a kind of, you would see that effect in the sky sometimes, like sunspots. I mean, that's a blossom. Because I tried to soften up the edge and then that's. I ended up and it was still too wet yeah, yeah. but it's okay. pretty I mean I've got a few paintings like that and I'm happy with them like that okay, thank you because I was You're like welcome okay Sarah Ooh, Sarah yeah very uh, pretty stop moving it yeah I know <laughs> get the light Sarah so I love your dry brush I mean very pretty, Sarah. keep doing that Sarah that is that is one of your best landscapes, I think, that I've seen. And I changed wow. to Viviva. That's what made a difference. Yeah, the Viviva is pretty spectacular. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm going to start for, doing it again. Not for everyone, but like even in combination with the other colors, it really can be so punchy. Okay, Joyce, I got you. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, I love Joy. Wow, that's beautiful, that sky. Joyce, yeah, I so, love your composition. Yep. Oh, thank you. So as I was trying to blend, it sort of, you know, blossomed into the upper sky, but it sort of looks like maybe clouds a little bit. Yes, it's, the blossoms in the sky can be beautiful. Sometimes, um, you know, it's those, that's why we do watercolor. We like those unexpected things. Yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. Now, if it had blossomed like in a weird mushroom or something, maybe you wouldn't have liked it, you know, but it blossomed so nicely. Yeah. Good job, Minnie. Mm -hmm. that, pretty. That's pretty with the pink glow. Thank you. Really nice. I love uh -oh. all your layering in the foreground too. It's interesting. Um, 
I, I don't know how to do it. So you don't know how to do what? The mountains. I'm going to have to. I'd but never know it. <laughs> I would never did them so nicely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were doing them for our, our imagination, like not even from a photo, you know? We will do another, we'll do mountains um, probably in September. We're going to do mountains on the Zoom for okay. those of you guys who are coming in the mountains with me and those of you who want to virtually come to the mountains. <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah, when you're doing stuff from your imagination, you know, it's this one, especially the first time, not so easy, but everybody did great thank you for sharing okay is there anyone else who wants to share bonnie check bonnie she's got her hand up oh bonnie you have your hand up okay give me a sec quick sec oh how did i lose bonnie okay let me find you bonnie <laughs> you're you must be at the end of my screen I don't see Bonnie. Oh, there you are. So sorry, Bonnie. Here we go. Uh, oh, Ooh. Bonnie. Nice. You have a style, Bonnie. Oh, nice. my gosh. I know. I can tell them it's your painting. Bonnie, <laughs> I love it. I, I do, too. Oh, my God. You need to frame it. You need to enter it in a contest and make Christmas yes. cards for everybody. Yep. <laughs> it's so Eight. beautiful. Beautiful, Bonnie. You're on You're muted. 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 There we go. Um, I had a little problem. The Viva is so vivid. You you just have to take the tiniest bit. Yeah. And uh, so I had a little problem with the, the Viva over here just being too bright. But uh, I might just need to bring that same blue over here just to look, kind of even it off. Yeah, like that, though. It's kind just of leave funny. it, Bonnie. It looks so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Uh, Thank only, you. Only you care. Nobody knows. Nobody, nobody notices goes, that. No, the yeah. line never looks uniform. It's always kind of. It's good. It's Thank so you. good, Bonnie. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Did I miss anybody else? Let's see. Let me go there. I don't see any other hands. Okay. It helps when I'm, see, I miss when I don't have Yasmin here. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put my Venmo in the chat. If you guys are enjoying yourselves, feel free to tip your host. You don't have to. This is a pay as you wish that these monthlies are always pay as you wish. And I want to say thank you for those of you guys who already sent me a little tip. I appreciate it. Pays for my Vivivas and <laughs> my Arches paper is really what it pays for, the Arches paper. So um, let's go back to the PowerPoint and we'll show a few more things and then we'll go ahead and we'll paint something else. So I think you guys did great. I want to show you a couple more glows. Oh. Here's a glow. I think this one was probably just wet and wet. This is Point Reyes. Up Beautiful. Here. Beautiful. Uh, Thank you. That nice. edge is something on the right is something that PowerPoint does. That's not. Oh, okay. That's not uh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where I did um, a purpley pink glow, like Minnie. Okay. And then here are some more dramatic glows, right? here's one where I incorporated into the clouds and this one um this was um an abstract that I did of the farm when we were out in England so I just have the barest hint of that it's a farm in their fields and oh yeah had some really vivid sunsets so um, my next pro tip is to know where your sun is in the sky so it's very obvious here because there's actually a sun, a ball shape, and the lights all emanating from it. Here in the clouds next to it, not as obvious, but the sun isn't all over the place, right? The sun is near the horizon and casting the glow into just the bottom bits of the sky. Same here. The sun is likely right over here, right? I would think if I asked everybody, they'd say, your sun is somewhere in here, right? So you should know where it is before you start putting that in, before you start painting, so that you know the directionality of the glow and the other light effects that you're going to have. So here's where it was, it's just a background. This isn't a sky painting, it's a dog painting. Great. Thanks. Great. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun to do that painting. Um, 
Did you pen and ink the dogs or they was paint? They're paint. They're watercolor. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful. They're just mostly white dogs. So a lot of it was just um, negative painting. Wow. Huh. So you should, you should know or find where the sun is, even when you can't see it. So that your glow is emanating from a certain point, right? So here you can see, like literally behind me, you can see, um, well, the sun was coming up. So there's barely any glow left. But the glow of the sun was behind the bushes. It was behind the building. But we know that it was in sort of the lower left to middle of the painting of the subject matter. And that's what's important, just to know what direction your glow is coming from. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a con something that's maybe a little bit confusing to the viewer. OK. So one of the tips that we talked about is to keep your palette soft and use pastel colors and just use them in tonal layers. Uh, you don't have to do that. I mean, a lot of artists will tell you that's the way that you create a sunset that isn't garish. But what if you want a garish sunset or sunrise? What if you want the illusion of a storm or fires? We don't have time to do storms. I was thinking it might be kind of fun to do another um, another Zoom where we do storms and night skies, like yeah. moody skies, because I recently painted my first nocturne in watercolor and boy, was it challenging, but I've definitely painted stormy skies before and I have some photos I've been collecting and I wanna do more of them. So you got, would you guys like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, definitely. Great. So the trick is just to be purposeful, right? Know what your what is your aim and then get the balances right. So if you want there to be bright color, just make sure that it's creating the mood that you want, right? If you want it to be more softer, um, then you might want to tend more towards pastels and be um, a little bit more exacting with where you use your most vibrant colors. And my, my final note is don't let reality hold you back. If you wanna have green in your sky, have green in your sky. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's true. It's really like the only color you rarely see in the sky is green. <laughs> but if it's reflected light, maybe you would see it. And if it's a storm or pollution, maybe you would see it. So anyway, yeah, our job isn't to be cameras. It's to create a mood. It's to evoke a sense of place or feeling. This is me uh, doing a sunset, <laughs> Catalina. So would you guys like to try to use the layering technique to do one of these pictures? Yeah, yes. sure. I put, oh, I don't know why I put that one twice. So what do you think about these? Who would like the, this first one? Like it's that. Nice because it has the, more of those dark clouds on top, whereas this one is more subtle. I know they're both really good. You're welcome to take screenshots of them and use them. This is mine. This is a sunrise at Bolsa Chica. This Beautiful. is my brother Matthew took this picture in the Caribbean on his sailing trip last month. Wow. So we would need a hairdryer for this one. Okay. Probably for both of them. Does everybody have that handy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why don't we do this one? Okay. Sure. Okay, so I probably should put this on my phone. <laughs> Otherwise I'm painting from my imagination. Okay. So I'm going to give everybody a chance to capture that if they want, do a screen capture. Cause I can't put my, I can't put my screen up as well as this one at the same time. So everybody grab that with another device. And then what I'm just going to do while you do that is you can see me in the little picture. I'm just re-taping up here. So gonna work small. And I'm just gonna draw a horizon. I'm actually gonna lower the ocean. Cause this is almost half and half. And this is gonna be a sky painting, not an ocean painting. Okay, so everybody got that picture? Yes. Yes. All right. So don't draw those clouds. All you're going to do is draw the horizon and the island. And my paper is not the same size and shape as this picture. I, I actually really, oops, sorry. 
I didn't mean to do that. Um, I actually want to do this again and do it because I've been wanting to do this picture for a while, but I was saving it for this class, but I'm, I don't have a panoramic paper with me right now. So you could certainly create a panoramic um, frame this way, but for now I'll just do a, a more of a rectangular version of it. But all I'm going to draw is just the little islands here. It'll be more dramatic when I when I do it um, in the longer format. Okay. So the key, remember, is to mix up colors, mix colors mm -hmm. up before you start. I do need to change my water really quickly. I'll do it in a little bit though. So um, what you wanna mix up is a blue for your sky. You can mix up that ocean blue. It can be almost the same and just put like a little bit of maybe a darker color in it or a greener color in it. And then you're gonna want a, a yellow and an orange. So those three colors can form your, we're gonna do a, a variegated base. So we're gonna go from blue, maybe a little purple if you want it, you don't have to, or orange, to yellow, to orange, back to blue again. And it really helps if you mix those colors up first. If you're busy trying to mix colors while you are painting and trying to get your um, paint down on the paper, what happens quite often, you guys, I'm sure you know this if you've taken my classes, is that you end up, your paper's drying and you end up getting lines in your wash. And we don't want that. We want really smooth, smooth wash. So while you guys mix up some colors, I'm gonna change up my water. A hair dryer. And get a hair dryer. Yeah. All right. So clean water is really going to help me get a true yellow instead of a greenish yellow. All right. All right. And make sure you mix enough up, especially of the blue. It's a lot of blue on this paper and on this page, you know. If you don't have enough, trying to mix it up in the middle again can be hard. So my rule of thumb is like, look at the size of your puddle and then look at the size of the uh, blue area on the paper that you're gonna be painting. And if the puddle isn't a little bit bigger than the blue area, then you need to make more. So what, two what colors did you say to mix, Anne? Blue, yellow, orange. That's what I'm gonna stick with. I see a little bit of red in that picture, but I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I might do it after the fact. Okay, so then I'm going to wet my entire paper, the whole thing, including the islands because they're dark, so we can just paint them over when they're dry. So I always have to look and make sure I didn't miss anything. I want it to be real nice and wet. So sometimes you gotta do, see, I missed the whole middle. <laughs> You're wetting the whole thing, you said? The whole thing. Yeah, we're going to just do an under layer and across the whole paper. And you might need to do two layers of water. I find if you have really good paper, that a lot of the time, the first wash of water gets soaked in immediately, absorbed immediately. And then you're going to want to carefully dry the edges with a paper towel or a cloth. The edges of the paper or where the tape of is? Of the tape, just the tape. Because I, I got behind. Okay. That's I got okay. behind. What three colors did you say we needed? Blue? Blue, blue, yellow, orange. Got it. Okay. You know, Anne, yeah. when I added the yellow to the blue, it really came out really, really, my like sky ended up being a green color. Yeah. Just poor mixing, less, less. Do you want to share? 
Can you show oh, me? No, I mean, I'm just putting it on my palette right now. Oh, okay. So, is your is your water tinted? No, uh-uh. It, it just picked up the yellow and made a green. More green. Oh, just start over. Okay. Yeah. The name of the Japanese artist, Joyce said, Japanese art. Oh, uh, it's Molly Hashimoto. Sorry, I will put that in here. Thanks. Um, Are you using the Viviva again? Uh, yeah, but you don't have to. No, you I'm, can put... Um, I'm looking at my colors I mix and go, maybe the Viviva. Use Prussian blue, or if you have a thalo blue, those both create nice washes in the sky. Hmm because they're, they're dyes and they flow real nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna wet my paper again since I was talking and typing and it's probably dry already. So I'm just wetting it. So for those of you guys who maybe missed or are catching up, and then I dry the edges of the tape carefully because I don't want run-ins. Then I'm going to grab up my first color and I'm going to tilt my paper just a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna grab my first color and start washing downwards. I'm just going back and forth. See how it's traveling? It's traveling a lot. So if it starts traveling too much for you, Go ahead and just level your paper out. It will stop the flow oh, just a little bit. So then you can go ahead and put your yellow in there. You might get a little bit of green. Don't worry about that. I'm going to throw in some orange down here. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of indigo into that same blue. I'm gonna turn my paper sideways. It's just easier for me. Nothing to do with anything, but Whoop. try not to splash. Mm. Now, in the interest of time, you could always do two washes. So you could do down to the ocean line, let it dry. And then when it's dry, do your blue ocean. You could do that. And it'll give you a harder edge at the ocean line. But it's, you know, it's not something you have to do. I'm going to thicken up my blue just a little bit with a little more indigo down here. I just want a little more drama right here in the foreground. and at these sides. This will help draw the viewer's eye in a little bit. So now I'm gonna look at it and that's like so soft. I feel like the orange is just gone. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna drop in a little more orange. Tricky, but it's still really wet. So I think I can do it. Hey, look who's here. Okay. This is a pretty good place to be. The yellow has softened a little bit. So you could put a little more yellow in there too, but that's always something you can do when it's dry as well. I feel like that's a nice variegated wash there. Dolores, how are you? Good, Anne. I called you, but I, I know you. I thought I the class was at 11. I thought it was at 11.30. Oh, 
Yeah, no, we're so only, we're probably good at eleven forty-five today. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll yeah. keep watching. Yeah, it's going to be rec it's recorded, so it's oh great. Go okay. Day. All right, so now I'm going to blast it with my hair dryer for a minute. So any of you guys need to do that, you might want to mute. I'm going to mute, and I'll be right back. How do I do that? How do we mute? Um, in your little square. <laughs> In your little square, you should have a mute, uh, on the lower left, you should have a mute button. I'm watching everybody with their <laughs> blow dryers. It's cute. So Dolores, we painted kind of a glowy sky and now we're doing kind of a full on sunrise. It actually, I think is a okay. sunrise. But they look essentially the same. So my waters are green again, so I'm just gonna dump them. And then I'll be back and we'll put some final, some finishing touches. So the idea, like a la Sterling Edwards, <laughs> is that less is more, I think, with this. If you get a nice underpainting, then it doesn't take a lot of accent touches to make it real beautiful. I think it's just a, a subtlety thing, right? So when I'm looking at the photo and I'm looking at it right here, I see that the clouds are kind of like a purple. Mm -hmm. And so what I wanna do is use the colors that I have and make a kind of a purple that can go with that. I don't wanna make a brand new purple. I wanna use the colors that I've already have. So I'm gonna add a violet to that turquoise blue. And remember our test swatches. Here's a great time to test those colors together. So obviously this blue is more vibrant than the one here, but hue wise, I like the color. And so now it's just about creating some of those dramatic shapes in here by layering them right on top. Doesn't have to look exactly like what it looks like, but I'm trying to try to get some of those clouds in there. Now 
Now I'm gonna mix a little bit of orange in because we're approaching the orange here in the sky. I think I'm using too thick a brush. See how watery the paint is that I'm using? I'm not going thick at all. I just really want just a touch. And then you can do the same if you want to punch up these oranges, reds. Remember I said I wasn't going to put any red in, but that maybe I'd add some red later. I also see that it turns to purple as you get down here at the horizon. So you can drop in a little purple at the base of the clouds where they're still wet. Oh, here's Chris. I'm actually gonna paint the shapes of the islands right now in purple, but I'll go over them in the darkest color when things are all done. Hi, Chris. So I think that that's enough for me. I don't know about you guys. You guys might want a little more. Maybe there's a little island over here on this side. Oh. You also can do some things with the water now if you want and do sort of, you carry that effect to the water, right? You want to create some of that texture in the water. So what's missing is that darkest dark. And it's a little, it's a little too wet to put it in right now. But I think it'll be very pretty when it gets in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of dark down here. If you guys wanna play with some blossoms, this might be a nice time to do that too. I think really the key is to not overdo it and have a lot of fun making colors <laughs> and adding to them and adding to them. But at a certain point, you do have to know when to stop, right? So I think I'm going to stop and I'm just going to blast it with my hairdryer one more time and then put in the, the darks of the islands and then we can share.
How is everyone doing? Everyone doing all right? Yep. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. Sort of, yeah. I've had fun, I just am not good. It's hard. <clears throat> so I have to decide now how black my islands are gonna be. And are they gonna be purpley or are they gonna be like black, black? So I'm going to test. I'm gonna test some colors and see what I wanna do. I think I like that bit of purple in there. Not too, too much purple, but a little. And I want to make sure my brush doesn't have too much water in it. And then, you know, if you're not brave, what you can always do in this kind of a situation is once things are dry, you can take tape and that tape can help you make your horizon line again. And you get a nice straight, clean, straight line that way for the base. You really have to make sure that your, your painting has to be dry, right? there is a little island out here or a boat or something so I'm going to put it in there then when you peel up the tape look how nice and sharp that is it's good right mm -hmm. when I look at the painting it even has that thin line all the way across. Yeah, that's what I saw too. So let's see if I can do that without the tape. I don't have as much of a line to do because I'm not doing a super long painting. And because it's me, I might put a bird or two up there in the sky. I love that we've got birds in the background. Thank you, painting outside. And I think yep. it's a doggy. Yes, yes, you're always gonna hear my dog. <laughs> I like it though. He can't but control himself. Are those outdoor birds or are those mini uh, They are mocking birds that are protecting their nest for oh. me. I'm such a threat right now. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason it's blurring okay so when i look at this i'm really missing a little bit more purple that's what i feel like i'm missing here so i can go back and i can add that purple here in the sky nobody said i can't I don't want to do too much, but I feel like it needs it. And but I'm going to stop now because we're already over time. So I'll go ahead and stop, and I'll share this here. I can't wait to see what some of you guys did. I didn't go bold as bold as uh, maybe I could have. Maybe I'll revisit it and punch up some of this orange at the bottom. Let's see, let me see. And then raise your hand if you guys would like to share. Yeah, it's a little bit like lackluster at this moment. <laughs> 
needs a little something, but it's a great start. It's a nice study. Okay, Deb, I'm gonna come to you first, then Valerie. It's uh, too much light on it. See if you could tilt it a little more the other way. Yeah, oh, that's great, Deb. I like the I love my little there. bird too. I, yeah. I think adds it. And the, adds it looks like there's a wave. That's gorgeous. Nice work. Thank you, Valerie, I'm coming to you. I already can see Valerie's vivid colors. Wow. Wow. Beautiful, Val. Mm. Love that glow you got down at the bottom. Nice. Oh, that bleed? Yeah, that was OK. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, so good. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you. Yeah. OK, Pam, I'm coming. Oh, sorry. You're sharing with Val. Let me see. OK. Oh, nice. Nice soft transitions there. Beautiful. You got a crisp line there too on the islands. Well done. Let's see. Wow, everyone's doing great. Joyce, I see you got that up. Can you hold it more in the middle? Beautiful, Joyce. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Oh, yeah. That's gorgeous. Look at mm -hmm. you guys today. Really nice. Yeah. Um, I see some people are still painting. <laughs> That's okay. Am I mm -hmm. missing anyone who wants to share? Ginny, do you want to share? Come on, Ginny. You're muted, Ginny. Sarah will share. We'll give Ginny a second. Ginny and, and her, we also want to We're going to put her on the spot. So. Oh, oh wow! I tried the V then. I I anyway. I've got more to do, but it's been fun. That's really good, Sarah. Thanks. Beautiful. I yeah. should have put that tape down on the horizon, but <laughs> yeah, but it looks great because it's loose overall. You know, it is pretty it loose. <laughs> yeah, so it's okay. Yeah. Thanks. In fact, if you have a whole painting that's loose and then you add one thing that's kind of crisp, it can throw it off. So okay. Do it all like you meant. Yeah, you meant it. Meant, meant it. it. I meant that. Okay, uh, Hillary was ready. I saw. Uh, I'm Bonnie, to, but this is Pam. Hillary, Bonnie, uh, and Anne. Anne Howard. Okay, so Hillary. Yeah, I lost my yellow. My mine's dripping. But... Oh, nice work. Oh, yeah, oh, that was very good. Very nice. I like it. Thank you, Sarah. Oh. Hillary's going to start using that in all of her Palace Verdes paintings now. Right? They're all going to be sunset paintings now, your cliff paintings. <laughs> I can oh, see it. I yeah. Just it's great. It. Thank you. You're welcome. Bonnie, coming to you. Oh, beautiful. Oh, very nice. Wow, Bonnie. Another beautiful one. Definitely a Bonnie painting. Cool. Yeah. Bonnie has a way of everything and distilling it yes to the that's essence amazing. that's beautiful bonnie i really like that thank you nice job nice color choices yeah really good okay Anne, were you holding up yeah i was I, I i lost my uh i need to go back i guess with the, the yellow oh wow that looks almost like that first catalina picture so pretty Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, you can get that yellow in there. That's really nice. Keep it up. In Hawaii. I would love to see it when it's done. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll put you on the spot again. Did you want to share? Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Jenny. Jenny will never say she wants to share. I know. Let me spot you, though, Jen. That's beautiful, Jenny. Put it over just a little bit. Nice yeah. work. Nice work, lady. Tomorrow, the, the watercolor fairy will come and make it look better. <laughs> no, I think it's better tomorrow. Christmas again on Friday. Yeah. Never, never throw anything out. Wait and see it the next day. <laughs> you guys, that was awesome. And I have to go to work now. So I have to say goodbye. Uh, but I really well, enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank, thank you, Anne. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Anne? Yes. Anne, before you leave. Um, I asked in the chat if you could um, either post or tell me the name of that Japanese 
watercolors. Yep. I put it in the chat. Oh. Her name is okay. Molly Hashimoto, and the okay. book is called Colors of the West. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah, you guys will love that book. <laughs> All right. Bye, bye everybody. Have bye, a great day. Thanks, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Bye. Bye. Bye.